Hello everyone and welcome to another hands-on session on Google Cloud Platform. Today we'll learn about building batch pipelines in Cloud Data Fusion. What are batch pipelines? Batch pipelines are particular type of pipelines used to process data in batches. ETL refers to set of processes extracting data from one system, transforming it and loading it into a target system. Batch ETL means data is extracted, transformed and loaded in batches. In this lab, we'll use the Pipeline Studio in Cloud Data Fusion to build an ETL pipeline. It includes built-in plugins to build a batch pipeline one node at a time. We'll also use the Wrangler plugin to build and apply transformations to the data that goes through the pipeline. The data we'll be using in this lab will be in CSV file format. And finally, the output will be written to a big query table. First, log into your Google account, open Google Console, activate CloudShell, and run the basic commands for setting up the project. Before loading the data into the project, you will need to check and update project permissions. You will again need to add necessary permissions for Cloud Data Fusion instance. After granting service account permissions, you will be able to build a batch pipeline. The next step is to configure, test, and then deploy it using Pipeline Studio. At last, we will view the results in BigQuery. You should be signed into your Google account to start the lab. After starting the lab, note down your lab credentials and use them to sign into the Google Cloud Console. You can find these credentials on the left side of your page. After signing in, click on the I understand button. It will open the Google Cloud dashboard. To get started, accept the terms and conditions. Agree and continue. Okay, so the first step is to activate Google Cloud Shell. It takes a few moments to provision and connect to the environment. When you are connected, you are also authenticated. Now you can run some sample commands like authorize list or configure list command. Before you be begin your work on Google Cloud, you need to ensure that your project has the correct permissions within identity and access management. So after running your commands, go back to the navigation menu. Before continuing, you should know your project number. To get your project number, open the home page. You can copy your project number from here. On Google Cloud Console, go to the navigation menu, click IAM and admin, go to IAM. Confirm that the default compute service account is present and has the editor role assigned. The account prefix is your project number. Next, you can create a Google Cloud storage bucket in your project and stage the CSF file. Run this command to copy the data into your bucket. Now go back and check your progress. Next, you will grant permissions to the service account associated with the instance. To check this, in the Google Cloud Console, from the navigation menu, select Data Fusion, go to Instances. You should see a Cloud Data Fusion instance already set up and ready for use. Click on the instance name. On the Instance Details page, copy the service account to your clipboard. In the console, navigate to IAM and admin. On the IAM permissions page, click add. In the new principles field, paste the service account. Click into the select a role file and type cloud data fusion API service agent. Then select it and then click on save. 
Now in the console, navigate to IAM and select the checkbox next to include Google provided role grants. Next, navigate to the IAM and admin, go to the service accounts, click on the default compute engine account and select the permissions tab on the top navigation. The account starts with your project number. Now in the new principles field, paste the service account you copied earlier. In the role drop down, select service account user and then click on save. While working with data, it's always handy to be able to see what the raw data looks like so that we can use it as a starting point for our transformation. For this purpose, you will be using Data Fusion's Wrangler component for preparing and cleaning the data, which will allow us to quickly visualize our transformations and real time feedback ensures us that we are on the right track. Open the Data Fusion instance. Click on the view instance link. Now select on your lab credentials to sign in. Click on no thanks. Open Wrangler. On the left side is a panel with pre-configured connections. Under Google Cloud Storage, select Cloud Storage Default. Click on the bucket corresponding to your project name. Now click on the Titanic CSV file. It's time for the data transformations. The first operation is to parse the raw CSV data into tabular representation. To do this, select drop down icon, the first column, and select parse menu item and CSV from submenu. You no longer need the body column that represents the raw CSV data, so remove it. Select the delete column menu. You now see your transformations. Next step is to build a pipeline. Click on create a pipeline. Choose batch pipeline. It will open the pipeline studio. You can see a graph with two nodes. They represent the E and T in your ETL pipeline. To complete this pipeline, add the big query sync, the L portion of our ETL. Now connect the Wrangler node with the big query node. There's a few mandatory fields that must be present and they are marked with a steric. Each plugin will also have a label field. This is the label of the node you see on the canvas where your pipeline is displayed. Add a reference name, a dataset name and table. Now close the properties. To test the pipeline, save from the upper right corner menu. You will be prompted to give name and a description to the pipeline. You can copy them from here. After setting the name and description, click on save. Pipeline, click on the preview icon. Then the button bar will show a run icon that you can click to run the pipeline in preview mode. In preview mode, no data is actually written to BigQuery table, but you will be able to confirm that data is being read properly and it will be written as expected once the pipeline is deployed. After about a minute, the preview will be finished. If all went well, you should see the raw data and the parsed records in the Wrangler node. Click on the preview icon again to toggle out of the preview mode. Click on deploy. Once your pipeline has been successfully deployed, you are now ready to run your ETL pipeline and load some data into the BigQuery.
Click on run to execute the ETL job. It will take about 10 minutes to finish the execution. When done, you should see pipeline status change to succeeded, indicating that pipeline ran successfully. In 10 minutes, the pipeline status will change from provisioning to starting to running and finally to succeeded. After the data is processed, we will see the matrices being emitted by each node in the pipeline. They will indicate how many records have been processed. We will be able to see that in the parse operation it displays 892 records whereas in the source there were 893 records. This happened because the parse operation took the first row and consumed it to set the column headings so the remaining 892 records are what was left to the process. We will be able to visualize it as the pipeline will complete its execution. You can now see the updated records. The execution is now completed and status has been changed to succeeded. Now let's observe the records. The records in are 893 while the records out are 892. It's time to check your progress. To view the results, open the BigQuery UI in the Cloud Console. Now in the left pane, in the Explorer section, click your project ID, which starts with Quick Labs. Under the demo data set on your project, click Titanic table and click Compose New Query. Now run select star from table query. It will return us all columns present in the table. We can visualize that in our result set. Now let's run another query, select count 1 from the table. It will return as the total number of records present and loaded into the table. You can see the result as 892 records. Now let's go back to check the progress and see if all the tasks are complete. Okay. This marks the end of the lab. Let's end the lab here. I hope you found this lab useful. Please leave us a comment and share your experience in running this lab with us. See you next time.